This is Dr. Eben Alexander. He's a neurosurgeon. He taught at Harvard and he had the most amazing experience I've ever heard of. He woke up one morning with severe back pain and started having seizures. At the hospital, they put him into a coma and began treating him for meningitis. The next thing he recalls is being in what felt like dirty jello. Then he saw a rotating bright white light. It came toward him and as it did, he heard music, but not in the limited sense that your ears hear music. He says the brain is like a reducing valve that cuts your senses off a little bit. That light opened up into a beautiful landscape and he was a speck of awareness on a butterfly's wing and it was flying among thousands of other butterflies and there were beings there dancing all over the place and he says there was no decay there at all he felt what he calls a divine wind sweep through that place and it made him aware that the creator was infinitely loving and it made him feel completely at peace on the other wing of the butterfly there was a beautiful young woman and they had sort of a mind connection this is wild that ended up being his birth sister. She had died some time before. He was adopted. After seven days in a coma, he woke up and the doctors had given him a 2% chance of living and no shot at recovery. His brain was so wrecked by that experience, he had no recollection of his life before the coma. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, follow and repost. This is Chris Keto. He ate the world's sneakiest peanut and had a life-changing near-death experience. It was hidden in a piece of cake. He was very allergic to peanuts. He thought he was mostly fine, so he finished having dinner with his friends. But once he got home, he started feeling much worse. He was trying to get to the hospital before he used his EpiPen. He made it, but he began fading out as soon as he got inside. At one point, a doctor apologized that he couldn't save his life because the epinephrine wasn't working. He accepted the idea that he was dying, and he started feeling euphoria. And he had this deep knowledge that nothing material really mattered in his life. It was about kindness and people. Then both of his grandfathers came to him, and they told him that it was not his time to die. He had to go back because he had a lot of work to do. Right after that, he was like shot back into his body. Body. and he was responsive for the first time in a while. He was saying that he needed oxygen. While he was freaking out, he heard his grandfather on his dad's side tell him to take it easy. The nurses told him they didn't have an explanation for why he didn't die. He went home eight hours after. Follow and repost if you enjoy these. I'm gonna make a lot more. Thank you. This shouldn't be my new favorite story, but it definitely is. This is Kelly Sammy. She tried to off herself in 2008 and had a truly remarkable near-death experience. She was living in New Zealand with her family, and she drove out to a very remote place. She drank a deadly concoction, wrote a bunch of letters to her family, and and then laid down in the back of her car. And she heard a crackling sound. And then she became that crackling sound. She felt a very strong pulling sensation, and then she found herself above the SUV looking at herself. Her body was writhing around in the car. She kept getting pulled upward until she popped through into complete blackness. But she was completely at peace. She says she could have stayed there forever. She says it felt like her energy had been released after being confined to like a sardine can. She could smell flowers and she heard music. She says she was one with it. Like she was the environment and it was her. Then she was summoned to a place. She had a life review and she says even the most difficult parts of her life were celebrated afterward. One of those was when she was treated very poorly by her grandfather when she was three. She says she was able to literally make peace with him. Don't know how that's possible. Then she saw her five-year-old son in a 21-year-old body begging her to come back. She felt herself moving back toward her body and heard the crackling sounds and the angels told her on her way out to breathe and don't resist. Then she was back in her body surrounded by EMT. Follow and repost if you enjoy these. I'm going to make a lot more. Thank you. This is Pam Reynolds. She was clinically brain dead during an insane surgery and had an incredible near-death experience during it. They lowered her body temperature to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which stopped her heart from beating and drained the blood from her head, and her brain waves flattened. Once the doctor started sawing through her skull, she felt herself pop outside of her body. She watched him doing this and accurately described the surgical instruments that she saw. She also reported exactly what nurses were saying during the operation. Then she felt like she was being pulled into a vortex. There was a tiny light that kept getting bigger and bigger, and she was able to make out figures in the light. It was a bunch of family members, and they were stopping her from going into the light. She says it's because if she went into the light, she wouldn't be able to come back to her body. Then her family members were feeding her something. Whatever it was, it was sparkly and it was was nourishing her and helping her get healthy again. She knew she had to go back to her body for her kids, and her uncle escorted her back through the tunnel. But when she saw her body, she did not want to get back in it. She says it looked terrible. She hesitated too long, and her uncle pushed her into her body, and she says it hurt like jumping into really cold water. Hers is considered one of the strongest of these cases because she was able to identify very unique surgical equipment. I'm enjoying making these, and I'm going to make a lot more, so if you enjoyed it, follow and repost. Thank you. This is Tyler Deal. He had a biking accident that resulted in an astonishing 
near-death experience. He was riding in a trail that he was very familiar with in the Redwood Forest. Lucky son of a bitch. He went to hit a jump that he'd hit many times before, but at the last moment, he realized that somebody had built it up to the point that it was almost vertical. He says the second he hit that jump, he knew he was dead. He felt himself hit the ground, and then the next thing he remembers is floating above the Redwoods. He felt like he was just pure awareness, and he felt the deep sense of peace. And it was like his senses were turned way up. He could see the little drops of dew on the Redwood needles. He could hear the ocean that was miles away. And it felt like the wind was moving through him. Then he saw his body about 15 feet away from the jump. And from deep inside of himself, he heard, do you want to go further or do you want to go back? And he knew instantly that he didn't want to die. The instant he had that thought, he was back in his body and feeling intense pain. The only part of his body he could move was his eyelids and he opened them. And when he did, he saw fairies coming down from the trees. He says they were circling him and giggling at him, like dive bombing him. Then he heard a ringing sound coming from the trees and he knew that they were communicating with each other and him and that they were trying to heal him. Then he took a couple of breaths and passed out from the pain. And the next thing he remembers is being in the local hospital, seeing the doctor telling him that he was very lucky he didn't die. Follow and repost if you enjoy these stories. I'm going to make a lot more. Thank you. A okay, new favorite story, this is Rudolf Geiger, and he might restore your faith in humanity. He was born with a lot of health issues, and was in a wheelchair since like early childhood. And one day he found himself lying in bed feeling very short of breath. The person helping him got him to the hospital very quickly, and at some point he remembers floating out of his body. He says that was the most beautiful feeling he's ever felt. He was in a tunnel headed toward a light. For some reason he was walking through the tunnel using walking sticks. The closer he got to the light, the more clear his surroundings became. He saw a meadow with green grass, blue sky. He was walking down a path and saying hi to a bunch of people that he knew. He knew them from a place where he'd worked in the past. He saw the owners of a cafe that he used to get lunch at. And after this experience, he found out that they had died in a car accident. And then a very tall figure approached him. It had long white hair. And it was dressed in all white. The being asked him if he'd like to stay there or if he'd like to go back. He decided he wanted to go back because he didn't feel he'd matured enough to join these people here. And that there was a lot for him to do back on Earth. Then he woke up in the hospital about three weeks later. I found this guy to be super inspiring. And if you did too, follow and repost this. I'm going to make a lot more. Thank you. This is Howard Storm. He had a near-death experience that completely flipped his worldview. He was on a trip with his students. One day at the hotel, he collapsed, and he said he experienced the most intense pain he's ever felt in his life. They brought him to the hospital, and he spent 10 hours there waiting for a surgeon with no pain medication. He got so weak that it was taking all of his energy to just breathe. He just shut his eyes and stopped trying. The next thing he knew, he felt fantastic. All of his senses were more acute than they'd ever been before. He tried speaking to his wife and the man in the hospital next to him, but he got no reaction out of either of them. He heard a group of people yelling his name from the hallway so he followed them there and they said they knew all about him and they'd been waiting for him for a long time thinking they were hospital staff he followed them into the darkness and they started getting very antagonistic with him he could tell they wanted to tear him apart and they eventually did but he was still alive a voice in the background said pray to god he says he thought to himself that's ridiculous i don't believe in a god the voice was insistent and he prayed and they got very angry with him and that was encouraging for him then he prayed a very vulgar prayer which is the best kind they left him alone and he eventually prayed to jesus and then jesus brought him to what looked like space full of stars but he realized that all the stars were actually souls he told them he had to go back and he protested a lot when he woke up the nurse said they'd found a doctor for him following repost if you enjoy these i'm gonna make a lot more Thank you. This is definitely the weirdest story I've come across. This is Rene Vulcan, and he had a friggin' weird near-death experience. Two days after he buried his wife, he started experiencing intense pain in his stomach. It got so bad that his son insisted they go to the hospital, and Rene doesn't remember walking into the hospital. Before this, Rene didn't have any belief in the afterlife. The next thing he remembers is the pain was gone, and he saw a very bright light. Then he saw his wife, who he had just buried that Wednesday. His wife asked him how he was doing, and then she gave him a kiss and told him that she was doing fine where she was. He says it was like being with her in real life, and he told himself that it wasn't a dream. She eventually told him to go back down and raise the kids, but make sure you don't do it alone. And the next thing he remembers, he woke up. He had no idea where he was, and he looked around the room. There was a woman with her hand on his forehead, and he saw a nurse standing near the beds next to him. The nurse told him that he'd had a heart attack, and his heart stopped for nine minutes. He wondered if his dead wife was trying to set him up with the woman who was in the hospital when he woke up. She owned a restaurant near the hospital, and eventually he worked up the courage to go there and strike up a conversation, and eventually told her about what he experienced while his heart was stopped. She started to cry and told him that that same Sunday, she saw him in her mind's eye, and knew that her partner had finally arrived. Follow and repost if you enjoy these, I'm gonna make a lot more.
I swear I could listen to these stories for a week straight. This is Maria Kaur, and when she was 21, she had a near-death experience that's got me feeling like I don't even know how to explain it. She was three months pregnant, and she was on a trip with her husband, and she fell down. She was bleeding, so they took her to the hospital, and they told her the baby was still alive, so she was super excited. But that night, she started feeling labor pains, so they took her into the delivery room. One nurse held her shoulders, and the other one climbed up onto her stomach and knelt on the baby. She was in so much pain that she says her consciousness split. They called in a surgical team, and when they entered the room, she suddenly saw everything thing from above. And the next thing she knew, she saw images of her life pulled out in front of her like on a film strip. Some of them had flames above them. There was what she calls a beautiful spiritual being standing behind her. The film strip of her life fell down to the floor and turned into like gray dust, except for the images that had flames above them. She asked the being about it and he told her that the pieces of her life that she loved selflessly, she was able to take with her into eternity. Then she was brought to a beautiful environment where she communicated telepathically with the grass and the trees and the animals. Then she found herself in a foggy place and she felt like she had just woken up and life on earth was a dream. She heard a voice asking her if she'd like to stay there or go back. Her immediate reaction was to stay, but then she thought of her husband showing up and finding out that both his wife and her baby had died. Then she felt herself being sucked back in her body and all the pain came back. Follow and repost if you enjoy these stories, I'm going to make a lot more. Thank you. Say hello to Bill Letson. He doesn't talk much, but he was a fireman and he got exposed to a pretty nasty sickness. It was pretty bad. He ended up in intensive care. And at some point it got so bad he floated up out of his body. He found himself traveling through a space that had stars everywhere. And he could feel a cool breeze flowing through him. He himself was like a cloud. He wasn't like a body. And it felt like somebody had poured honey through his brain. He says it was a very sensual feeling. I hate that I can't make the jokes I want to make right now. He thought about how crazy it is that he forgot who he really was. Like the whole identity of Bill Letson was just a trick. Eventually, Bill found a place he could land. It was a solid place that felt very real. When he landed there, he saw three men in hooded robes. He knew instantly that he'd known these guys forever. There was a fourth guy there who seemed like he was in charge. And Bill says the love coming off of that guy was so intense that, that he felt like he was going to burst out in tears. He felt like he should probably do some sort of a life review, but the beings there just laughed at him. Then one of them elbowed the other and said he doesn't remember us. The main message he got from those beings was that life on Earth is kind of a joke and that we take it way too seriously here. He didn't talk about his experience for a long time after he got back. Follow and repost if you enjoy these. I'm going to make a lot more. Thank you. Okay, this is the coolest story I've found so far. This is Dr. Peter Cummings. He was an atheist and a neuropathologist, and he had a near-death experience that messed him up pretty badly. He and his family were rafting down one of the most difficult rivers in the world, and they flipped. Pete got pulled under the water several times, and one time he was stuck down there for a little bit too long. He had the thought that he was definitely dying, and he was confused as to why he wasn't more panicked about it. He knew he was dying, but he was wondering what was taking so long. And then everything stopped, like the bubbles in the river paused. He waved his hand through the bubbles, and they like moved around his hand. There was a bright light and then suddenly he could see everything around him. And more than seeing it, he could experience it. Like he knew that his family had been pulled out and he knew the color of the kayak that pulled them out. He even knew about a family member's personal crisis that he hadn't known about before he drowned. He experienced an overwhelming sense of love and a voice told him that his family was going to be okay. Then the light disappeared. He was slammed up against a rock and out of the water. He couldn't see very well, but somebody was extending a paddle out toward him. They got him back to a boat and he finished the river. After his vacation, he had a very hard time adjusting to normal life again. And he was pretty disgusted by the whole professional environment that he found himself in. Follow and repost if you enjoy these. I'm going to make a lot more. This is truly an amazing story. This is Jeanette Biro. She had a life-changing near-death experience during a routine surgery. After being put under, she remembers going through the light. And on the other side, she found herself walking through grass. And her grandmother was there to meet her. She saw people she recognized having a barbecue. And some she recognized from her life before. It's like meeting an old friend you hadn't seen in a while. She felt an incredible amount of joy and bliss there. But she says it's not like how you can become overstimulated by joy here. She says it was like hours at that barbecue. Then her grandmother took her to a white room where what she calls her council was there waiting for her. Outside of a window in that room, she could see galaxies. One of the members of her council rolled out a blueprint of her life. There was an iridescent light drawn down the center of the blueprint. She could see that it was still alive. They asked her if she wanted to stay there. They told her that her body had been weakened to a point that they could basically flip a switch and give her a heart attack. She could stay there with them. But she knew the value that she had gained through all the struggles in her life. So she told them she wanted to go back. She wanted to be there for her kids and family. They gave her the opportunity to remove some of the struggles that she was going to have in the future. She pulled some out. It was hard for her to believe that she was actually allowed to do that. She heard the nurse asking her if she was awake, and then she had her write down some phrases to help her remember her experience later. Follow and repost if you enjoy these. I'm going to make a lot more. Thank you.